Welcome to this presentation on the addition of complex number of supports in JUM. So this work was supported by a small development grant uh, of New Focus. So thanks to New Focus for supporting this work. So why do we want to add support for complex numbers? It's actually used in a lot of applications. So here I have cited three. So first, when you model with electricity, uh, you like to represent the alternating current with the intensity and a phase. And that's also the same way you represent complex numbers, right? And so it's quite convenient to represent this alternating current with complex numbers. So for this reason, in this application, it's quite useful to have uh, support for complex numbers in the optimization uh, modeling framework. So in quantum physics, you have Hermitian operators that are uh, represented with complex numbers and again, um, also in some of squares, um, you also have a version with Hermitian matrices that is used, for example, with non-commutative variables. And last but not least, we actually have solvers so that IPATIA that support complex cones. And so when they added support for complex cones, Chris and Leah um, were also trying to add support uh, for complex numbers in jump as well, so that we can, the, the user can directly uh, model this, this complex constraint in jump and then give it to IPATIA. And they have, they have given motivation for this work and also actually gave initial design um, for what this could be and started the, the discussion. But as we will see, um, it was a bit difficult because there was actually two choices for adding the support and uh, it was difficult to know which one we would choose. So what do we mean by addition of complex numbers in jump? So we want the user to be able to create a complex variable, for instance. So here, uh, this would mean you, X is a complex number with a real and imaginary part. And when you say this is the lower bound, we mean that one is the lower bound of the real part and two is the lower bound of the imaginary part. And same for stacked and upper bounds. And then you could add complex inequalities. So say something like this. Here you have a complex expression on the right, also a complex expression. It makes sense to say um, whether X and Y so that this is equal. Then you also want to be able to create emission PSD matrices. This is matrices that are uh, emission and, and PSD. And then you also emission uh, PSD constraints. So here you would say that this matrix, um, that could be a matrix uh, that depends either on finely or quadratically uh, on your variables is uh, is PSD. So here you add the emission uh, key keyword from linear algebra to show that uh, this is an emission uh, matrix that you want to be PSD. Just like when you would use symmetric to show that it's a symmetric matrix that you want to be PSD. So that jump sees that this matrix is, is symmetric. It doesn't have to constrain it to be symmetric. Here it would be the same with emission. So the difficult design decision is, do we really want to add complex variable? So that would mean that whenever you have a variable, you never know if this variable has an imaginary part or not. So this could violate a lot of assumption in a lot of code that is already written in jump, for instance. Like let's say you support, you want to rewrite this because you are using a solver that's only support real constraints. And here you have a complex constraint. So you think maybe you can rewrite it like this. So you take the real part, you take the imaginary part and you have two equalities, equalities between the real and the imaginary part. Now for this to be valid, you need X, Y, and Z to be real. If X is not real, then this is not correct. This is not the real part of the expression because X might have a real and imaginary part as well. So with this, you get a glimpse of how complicated things get if you start to have variables that have real and complex parts. So then if we only want to keep real variables, how do we support this? 
So the way we can do that is when the user writes this, what jump does is it actually creates two real variables. And then x is simply a plus b times the image. So when you look at x, you don't see a variable. You really see a complex expression. So even if the user wrote, write this, x is not a variable, it's a complex expression. Now, what do we do for emission PSD matrices? It's actually the same. When you create an emission uh, matrix H here, so you know the matrix is emission. So on the diagonal, you know it's only two real entries. And on the off diagonal, you have a real and a complex entry. So actually, this is parameterized by four real variables, two for the diagonal and two for the single off diagonal entry. So we can create four real variables. So we have created a, a cone uh, in the solver interface that has dimension four, and this is in R4. So this is four real variables. And when the user creates this, we create these four variables in this cone, in this real cone, and then we compose this matrix with these real variables. And then if the solver is IPSHA, it will actually support this cone. If this is a solver that does know about this cone, there is also a reformulation into the real PSD code. So what you do is you create a four by four PSD code on the upper left and upper right, you have the real part. And on the up, uh, upper right, so upper left and lower right, you have the real part and upper right, you have the imaginary part. So you need to make sure when you create this uh, PSD matrix that indeed uh, it corresponds to the imaginary part. So the diagonal should be zero and then, um, because the emission matrix is conjugate that you should have uh, here the opposite between the, the upper um, and lower part of the upper and lower triangle are, are opposite to each other for the imaginary part because it's, it's conjugate. And then the H matrix that the user has created uh, would be this. So if we had to, to do the reformulation directly in jump, we could do this. When the user write this, you do that. But the disadvantage of this approach is that then if, a, if the solver actually supports emission PSD code, it will still receive a big PSD constraint four by four. Now, by actually um, creating a, a, a set at the solver interface, we allow solver that actually do support this set to directly receive um, um, a constraint that say we add four variables in this cone. And then this reformulation is done only if necessary, if the solver does not support it. Now, we've done the same thing um, for a constraint where you have that is an affine aquatic expression of, um, of jump variables and you want it to be in the real PSD cone. Then again, you have the same reformulation that you can do. And this reformulation is again done lazily because we have added uh, the set of emission PSD variables. So in conclusion, actually, all variables are still real. And when the user wants to create a complex variables, we simply create two real variables that we combine. The cones are still real. So the emission PSD cone is a cone in R4. And so the only set that no is complex is the equal to of complex log 64 that is used when you have an equality between two complex expression. So if you try um, at the level of the solver interface, you say, I want to create one variable in the set, um, this won't work because that would essentially uh, be like creating a complex variable. So uh, this does not work, but you can add a constraint in this set. And the transformation is done lazily by adding new sets and new bridges so that solver that do support complex constraints uh, will actually exploit it and be faster. And that's also give an incentive to not support complex numbers in solvers. Thanks for your attention and let me know if you have any questions.